Hey guys, it's Dwight. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great start to the week. So I'm gonna do another pour today. I'm gonna to do a dump and swirl on a large canvas again. I'm gonna do a 30 by 40 canvas. And I'm gonna use colors of blue, um, sort of a teal, and maybe a pop of red, something to kind of just um, pump up the volume a little bit with that painting. And of course, I'm gonna have some white in between some of the layers as well to lighten things up. So I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna use a colander again today. I enjoyed using it the other day, and um, I think I might though. I think I might get an interesting pour if I do that. So we'll see. I haven't made up my mind yet. I haven't gone to my studio to mix my paints. I'll be doing that in a moment. Now, I just wanna remind you that I uh, mix my paints the same way all the time. It's one part paint, two to three parts Floetrol, drizzle of Liquitex pouring medium and water. That's all I use. I don't use satin enamel. I don't use Australian Floetrol. Um, I don't use silicone. Um, my experience has been that cells will appear when you thin your paints and you move them around on the canvas. So um, that's what I'm doing today on a large canvas. So I've got a lot of space to move it around and to dump them. So I'm gonna go in my studio in just a few minutes and I'm going to mix my colors. I will show you the colors and um, we'll get started in a few. Okay guys, let's see you in a second. Hey guys, I'm back here on my colors for today. So I first want to address um, questions I get sometimes about how do I know how much paint to put on the canvas? So here's my canvas, 30 by 40, it's quite large, right? So um, I have a chart, it's a little stained, <laughs> but what it says is for a 30 by 40 canvas that takes 42 ounces just to cover uh, the surface. It doesn't include the edges. So I have 38 ounces here of color with the white, sort of the teal, um, that's called rose, and that's some of the teal with a little bit of white in with it. Uh, there's scarlet red, ice blue, ice blue with a little bit of white, and then um, yellow orange. So that's 42 ounces, and I'm gonna stack them today like I would layering a pancake. Now I decided that I am not going to use the colander, which I don't want the colors to mix all that much. Um, and then I have black, that's in the 24 ounce cup. Now, if you do the math, that's quite a few ounces. That's over 60 ounces, I believe. So the purpose of that is, is that I have to, you know, tilt off the corners and off the edges. So I'm losing a lot of paint. I don't want to overstretch it. And I don't, um, when I have not enough paint and have too much paint, then it just causes problems. So um, this works for me. Um, for this size canvas, this is the perfect amount of paint. Now, I'm, just, I'm saying that now, and I'll probably jinx it, <laughs> but I guess we'll see in a little bit um, how this goes. So I'm gonna pour basically in this order. I'm gonna start with the white, and then lay down a couple of colors, put some more white, a couple of colors, maybe some white and the orange on top. Um, and we'll see, we'll go from there. So I'm gonna pour in the middle of the canvas, and um, we'll swirl it around, and then we'll start tilting. Okay guys, hold on, I'll be with you in a second. Okay, here we are back in the studio getting ready to pour. So first, I would like to say hello to everybody out there. Jazz hands, how you doing? Um, so like I mentioned, I decided to not use the colander. I think I just wanted to pour my puddle um, and stack it like a pancake. So um, for typical, I like to start with the white as that um, lightens up the canvas and um, especially colors that are um, transparent or semi-transparent. The white helps them um, brighten up. Sometimes they might be a little lighter than the original color because of the white underneath. So then I use that rose color um, on top of the teal and then a lighter version of the teal. And then um, a little bit more white on top. I did it kind of high because I wanted it to sink in there a little bit. Um, and then I put the red, which of course risks turning pink, but that's a risk I was willing to take as I was going for some soft colors in this pour. Um, so the red is, is bright, and then I put the blue. So you know what that makes, it makes purple, so we'll see what happens. Just the rest of the white, which sunk into the puddle. And let's see what I have. Last but not least, I have that sort of light blue. And I just kind of spread it in there. I didn't really care how I put it in because it'll still show up nicely in the pour. Now, orange. Uh, next time I'll think twice. <laughs> okay, wasn't my favorite color. 
Um, so my biggest fear was I was getting ready to pour the black. And um, what happens sometimes is when you have black next to orange or yellow, you risk um, sort of that ugly puke color green. And what you can't see when I'm pouring here is there's a light ring of green around um, the black and the orange where they come together. But thankfully, you know, I can dump that off um, as I spread the paint around the canvas. So that wasn't that big of a problem. So I was taking my time once again, um, and I'm going to do a swirl because I want the black to cover the paints. A little black in the corner because that's my last corner. I tilt over and make sure I have enough paint to get over that corner. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's my favorite part. And then we gotta go over the first corner. Gonna bring it back a little bit and then over to the next corner. Now this painting started to sell up really quickly. You wait to see when I put this down how quickly it sold up before I even put it on time lapse. It was almost done. As you can see, there's a lot of color coming up on the canvas right now. So I put the canvas down, move it around a little bit, um, I get some of the cells to open up. Pop a few bubbles. I think it filled in really nicely even before I used my heat gun to pop some bubbles. I think I was busy drying my hands there. Yep, you can see the towel there in the reflection. Yeah, look how quickly it's filling up. So yeah, there's a lot of purple in this because I put the red and the um, blue together, but that's okay. Sometimes that's the beauty of it that you get a combination of the color and it's more beautiful than the actual color itself. There we go, the heat gun is filling in. Now I'm gonna pause here and let you watch the rest. And after the time lapse, there's just a short little part that you can see up close some of the cells. Okay guys, thanks for watching and um, please uh, watch all the way to the end. And if this is your first time watching, please feel free to subscribe, it's free, no obligation. Um, your subscription helps me reach more people and that makes me happy. Okay guys, hold on and watch the rest, thanks. Friends, here we are with the wet results. I'm very, very pleased. If you noticed, wow, when I put the canvas down, it filled in quite dramatically and really quickly. So it was ready much faster. I was really uh, thrilled by how quickly uh, the cells popped up and filled in. And like I said before, I'm still searching for my perfect, well, perfect as a maybe not the best word to use, but for my best <laughs> painting to use in my show. Um, and I think this one probably has turned out the best in terms of composition wise that I think um, would show really nicely on a wall. We've got a little bit of that ring going on here. And this area in here is pretty much symmetrical. So I don't see any problems with it drying. I think, um, I think it's gonna, oops, <laughs> there we go. I think it's gonna dry pretty much as is. Yeah, the negative space needs some work. Um, the orange only popped up there, which I probably didn't need to put that in there. But anyway, I'm liking it. So this is it guys, thanks so much. And um, we'll see you later this week.
guys have a great day. And if you have any questions, you can email me at dwightpours at yahoo.com. Um, and yeah, we'll look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you soon.